Good morning. We're going to be talking a little bit today about uh, the Staten Vertelling, and this is going to be part eight. And we're going to compare this to God's pure, perfect word, the King James Bible in the English language. Uh, we also have that in German. We have it in Spanish, King James in Spanish. We have King James in Hebrew. We have King James in Greek. We have uh, King James in, a, in, a, in a, quite a few languages. But uh, Dutch, Staten Vertelling, Dutch had book. Dutch uh, Bible book, whatever it is, it's all corrupt stuff. So we're going to be taking a look at this today. And uh, part eight is uh, God's word for the Dutch speaking people, how the translators treat a virgin. And, and these were uh, Calvinist translators. Two of the translators dis mysteriously disappeared before they translated this book, just before. Kind of interesting, I talked about in part one and some other parts. So I ended in part seven on, on some Dutch some Dutch pastors have attacked me for handing out uh, uh, King James Bibles that have some pictures, but the preservation of the Word is what is needed for the people. I am the Word, Jesus said. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. So the Word, the Word is what's important. So we're, we're, we're talking about words now. Of course, uh, some King James Bible did have some pictures, and and some images from heaven shouldn't be in a book, and, and from under the earth shouldn't be in a book. There's some scripture on that. But the preservation of God's word is what is needed for the people. I buy King James Bibles wherever I can get the best prices on eBay or wherever. I have hand, handed out some King James Bible, and they're they're a world world Bible, world Bible King James translation, world Bible, and I've had I've handed out a couple of these. But preservation of God's word—that's what's important. That's what has to get to the people. Preservation of God's word. These Bibles, even though they have some pictures in them. I mean, there is the odd picture in here. Here's the picture of Adam and Eve in the garden. And uh, there's Moses with the Ten Commandments. Moses with the Ten Commandments. There's uh, David killing Goliath. David killing Goliath, yeah. And there's uh, uh, Jesus bringing someone up, healing the sick. Jesus, saying, hey, I mean, no, we shouldn't have an image of Jesus. There's, there's another image of Jesus. There's uh, where Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Here's Jesus uh, throwing out the money changers out of the temple. So it's true, there's a few pictures. But these same pastors that criticize me for that, I see them watching movies. I see them watching movies. I see them watching movies with them. But, <coughs> but it's true, these pictures shouldn't be in here. And usually when I give one of these away, I, I, I recommend that you cut the pictures out. Because we shouldn't have an image of anything in heaven. I can show you those scriptures, I'll put them on the bottom. Shouldn't have images of anything in heaven. But the point is, God's word does not change. God does not change. His words are perfect. Preserved words in this King James Bible. But you take a Staten Vertelling. You take a Staten Vertelling. This wicked Staten Vertelling. And, and, and God's words have changed. We, we already showed you hundreds of them that change. At least 100. But hundreds, I'm sure. I'm, I'm going to go back. We'll go back through and I'll count them all for you. And I'll put that in the, in the very last part of the teaching of the series. Hundreds of them. I buy a lot of these Bibles on eBay. I get the best price possible. And I, and I give them away. Anybody needs a Bible, we give them away free. We give up Bibles all over the world. And anyone ask me, I send them Bibles. Gospel tracts. Need Bibles, gospel tracts? We're just going to send them out to you. We're going to get you one. That God's pure, perfect words, the truth. We're going to get you one. God will buy me another one. I'm not worried about it. So, yeah, I have purchased a, a couple of these Bibles with pictures. And I've given them out in the past because I scrambled. And if someone comes into my office, I scramble, try and find them a King James Bible real quick. And I give it to them and off they go. So, uh, <clears throat> now that we've looked at one of these... I want to talk about these pastors that have attacked me for it. They've attacked me, but yet in their Bibles, in their Bibles, yeah, in their Staten Vitelli, I'm going to show you pictures of the Illuminati, all-seeing eye, all kinds of pictures, all kinds of diagrams, and their Staten Vitelli Bible, these same pastors, these such hypocrites, and they don't have God's pure, perfect words, you know? The Staten Vertelling does not have the pure, perfect, without error words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Staten Vertelling is a corrupt Bible. It's a corrupt Bible. And yet they're going to criticize me for handing out God's words free. The people that want to hear them. Here, let's... I just want to show you what this actually says. Is the redenen the des Herren ze rende Reden de silver, her, her, her louter in een aarden smelter kroos, de silver seven maal. Gij, her, zult hen bewaren, 
Ge zult hen behouden voor dit geslacht tot in geweldheid. Uwigheid. So there we go again. The reden, the words of the reden, the reasons of the Lord, they changed, they took away and they added to God's word. I showed you one of the uh, world Bibles, the King James Bible, that I, but these same pastors that attack me for this have all kinds of pictures and even Illuminati Antichrist symbols in, in all their uh, Staten Vertelling Bibles, all the earlier editions. I don't know, some of the new ones don't have any images, but still. The point being is, is, is these things are in the Staten for telling too. So if we're going to go on images, then uh, by their own words, they've condemned themselves. So there's an eye, all-seeing eye, and numerous pictures that were also in their Staten for telling translation, which does not have the pure, perfect, preserved, without error words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in, in this corrupt Bible. It's not there in this corrupt Staten for telling. So some, some of the words... Uh, some words, yes, there are some words. Yeah, there, there's there's some words in here that were were translated correctly. This is the uh, uh, Staten General Bible for the Dutch speaking people that they're they're used as a as a common uh, basis Bible, which was printed in 1637. And uh, you notice there's an all-seeing eye in here. I find that very interesting. Now, why would an all-seeing eye be in? An official Dutch Bible that claims to be King James. The uh, it's a, uh, not a copy. They call it uh, like the King James. Uh, then we go on. This is the Bible that is the Hans Heilige Schrift, and uh, not very good in Dutch, but uh, it's got the Old and New Testament. It's called Staten General, which would be the. Uh, I think it was translated between 1618 and 1619, actually published in 1637. What we're looking for is the Word of God for the Dutch-speaking people. Where's the Word of God? Now, we got all these pictures in here, and uh, I really get criticized when I give away a King James Bible that has pictures in it. Some of them do world Bibles, and I give them out because of God's Word, not because of the pictures. I mean, you want to cut the pictures out, cut the pictures out. I'm not about to start cutting up a Bible, but... Uh, the, the printer published them with pictures. That's all I was, was available at the time when I bought them, and, and I bought them. But uh, there's some pretty, a lot of pictures of Jesus. You see Jesus and stuff, and you're starting to telling your official Bibles here. So why are those pictures in there? And does it have any relevance to the script? But for the majority, it's been corrupted. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth corrupt fruit. Let's go there. Let's go to that. That'll be in Matthew 7, 17. A corrupt tree bringeth forth corrupt fruit. So if there's corruption in here, which Dutch pastors deny, oh, no, 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 my Bible's not corrupt. No, 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 no. Though that's the old Dutch. It's not corrupt. So let's just see here. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 7, 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So you saw that evil fruit, corrupt tree. Okay, now let's go to the Staten Vertelling. See what the Staten Vertelling says in Matthew 7, 17. Matthew 7, 17. Matthew 7, 17. Also, in either good boom bring forth good fruiten, and in quad boom bring forth quad fruiten, which is translated in English to so every good tree brings forth good fruit, and an evil tree produces evil fruit. Huh? Did you catch that? Let's go to Luke. Let's go over to Luke. Let's go to Luke uh, 643. Sorry, right, that's King James Bible. The King James Bible, we're going to go to Luke 6.43 and get our witness scripture. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Uh, and then the Dutch Staten Vertelling. Get your witness scripture in the Dutch Staten Vertelling. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke. Luke 6.43. Luke 6.43.
want het is geen goed boom de kwade vroeg voortbreng en en geen kwade boom de goeie vroeg voortbreng which is translated to for it is not a good tree that brings forth bad fruit and no evil tree that produces good fruit uh, that's the English translation of quada this quada word let's look at that word quada k-w-a-d-e very carefully put that in your translator check it check it online ask, 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 ask the internet if you don't believe me if you don't have an old Webster's dictionary ask the internet what, what quada means uh, if what quada means is evil angry bad worse ill it doesn't have it doesn't even relate to corruption or corrupt so why would the Dutch translators take out the word corruption for the same reason all the English ones do the same reason all the English New English Bibles take out the word corruption they don't want you to know their books corrupt just like all the New English Bible translators did these translators are burning in hell according to Revelation 22 18 and 19 and if you continue to pass on their lies the chances are you will too just ask any Dutch pastor. Don't, don't take my word for it. Check what I'm saying. Ask any Dutch pastor that's using a Staten Vertelling or another Dutch Bible. I've asked them all. I've asked all the ones that I know at least. Not them all. I asked all the ones that I know. They all say to me when I ask them, does your Staten Vertelling have corruption in it? No. No, they say. And they actually have something to get very angry with me is, no, this is God's word for the Dutch people. Or no, they say there's just a couple of mistakes for the, the half for the few of them that are half honest, they say, well, it's just a couple of, of mistakes. Uh, but most of them say, no, this is God's word for the Dutch speaking people. That's a lie. They're lying. They're lying to you when they tell you that. Try to ask, you know, just take some of the things that I put in this video and challenge them with it. And you find, you'll find out how upset they get and how they're lying. No, but it, you go back to the Hebrew, you go back to the Greek, and it actually means something else. They're lying to you. Try and ask them yourselves. You out there that have Dutch pastors, and, and, and Dutch Bibles. Ask your pastor them yourself. Find out yourself if what I'm not saying is true. Now the King James Bible, we're going to go to Romans. Romans uh, 3 to 4. Uh, sorry, Romans 3 4. God forbid. Yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. So, are you judging me? According to God, I'm a liar. Judge me. Get out your King James Bible and check if what I'm saying is true. Gee, I check the Dutch Bible, see how corrupt they are. See if what I'm saying is true. Every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Now, what do you think the Dutch translators would have done to that verse? Hmm. Let's go to Romans 3, 4 from the Staten Vertelli. Let's go to Romans 3, 4 in the Staten Vertelli. Romans 3, 4. Dat ze weer doch God zijn waarachting, maar alle mensen liggen achtig, gelijk als geschreven is, om op dat ge geen herrechtwaarding wordt in uw woorden. En overwint wanneer gij oordeelt. So what that's translated to is that they are far away, but God is true, but all men are lying. As it is written, you might be justified in your in your words. That's not what it said. And overcome when you judge. When you judge, overcome when you judge. Zeggen what ye zeg? Judge, judge. Uh, means to sechen thy sayings are to sechen if you take thy sayings which is in the in the Dutch in the, in the English King James it's zechen or what's your sech the sayings so wh why did they change that you know and, and, and look at the very very beginning of this Romans 3 4 that they veer which is translated to that they are far away what, what is that? What, what, what did God say God said God forbid when Paul wrote Romans, he said, God forbid. The Dutch say, uh, 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 change God forbid into that they are far away? Are you kidding me? Okay. So, anyhow, we're talked about virgins. So, where did the virgins go? 
Where did the virgins go in the Staten foretelling? Did the translators know what a virgin was? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Let's go to Isaiah 7.14. We're going to look at the virgins here, what they did to the virgins. Isaiah 7.14. Isaiah 7.14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now you're going to find out that the Dutch didn't mess too much with that scripture because they knew how serious that was. But all of God's words are serious. All of God's words are pure and preserved from this generation forever. The words of the Lord are pure words. A silver tried in a furnace of earth. Preserved from this generation. Uh, uh, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them forever. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. That's right. So Isaiah 7.14, let's look what the Dutch, Dutch wrote. Let's look what the Dutch translators did with that. Let's just take a look here. Daram zal dacher zelf uden uleden in teken geven zeg in mag magd m a a G D. That's virgin, yeah. Zal swanger worden in ze zal in sunbaren in zijn name Emmanuel geten, which is translated to. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and she shall bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. So they didn't they didn't mess that up too bad, eh? They got the word virgin in there, eh? Now let's go to Isaiah twenty-three four. Let's go to Isaiah 23, 4. We're in the same book here, right? So they have no excuse. Okay. Isaiah 23, 4. Be thou ashamed, O Zidon, for the, for the sea has spoken, even the strength of the sea, saying, I travail not, nor bring forth children, neither do I nourish up young men, nor bring up conceive, and she shall bear a son. And his name shall be called Emmanuel. And what did the Dutch do to that verse? We're in the, don't forget, we're in the same, same book of Isaiah. What did the Dutch translators do? They knew what a virgin was, right? We saw that. They knew what a virgin was. So Isaiah 23, 4. Isaiah 23, 4. Isaiah 23, 4. Isaiah 23, 4. Word beschamd, O Sidon. Want die ze spreken, ja, de sterkte der ze zeggen, ik heb geen berensnood gehad, ik heb ook niet gebaard, en ik heb geen jongelen groot gemaakt, en geen jonge dokters opgebracht. Which is translated to, Be ashamed, O Sidon, for the sea speaks, yeah, the strength of the sea, saying, I have not had a travail, neither have I borne, nor have I raised up any young men, neither have I brought up your daughters. Virgins taken out, they changed virgins to young doctors. Wow! You see? In, in that same book, Isaiah, they already took virgins out. Let's go to Isaiah 37, 32. It gets worse. It gets much worse, friends. Much worse. Isaiah 37, 22. This is the word which the Lord hath spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, hath despised thee, and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Isaiah 37, 22 in the Staten foretelling. What do you think that they did with that? I'm not going to read the Dutch. You can read the Dutch yourself. I'll put the, the titles in down below. Uh, you know, And uh, I'll just put the English here, the translation. Uh, verse 22. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. The young woman. The young fro. The young fro, they put in Dutch. The young woman. The daughter of Zion. Despised you. She mocked you. The daughter of Jerusalem shakes her head behind you. Behind you? Behind you? God never said behind you. God just said he shook her head. It should have shook her head at you. And changing virgin into young woman again? Shame on these translators. Absolutely shame on them. And she and, and God said 
Uh, she despised thee. Here in, in Dutch, she's saying she mocked thee. But anyhow, it's, it's, it's just complete wickedness. Now let's go to Isaiah 47.1. Get another witness. Isaiah 47.1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chal Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Now let's see what the dust translators did with that. Isaiah 47. 1. Dalf af in sit in getstof ge jonkevro. Dr. van Babel. Jonkevro? That's not a virgin. Sorry, that's not a virgin Dutch. No, 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 no. Don't you try and twist it. Don't you guys try and twist it now. Especially you pastors out there. You know, which is translate to, I go down and sit in the dust, you young lady, daughter of Babylon. Sit on the earth. There is no more throne, thou daughter of the Ch Chaldeans. Ch Chaldeans. For you will no longer be called the tender nor the voluptuous. So according to the Calvinist, wicked Calvinist translators of this book, there were no virgins in Babylon, only young ladies. Are you kidding me? Let's go to Isaiah 62, 5. Isaiah 62, 5. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth, rejoiceth, rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. Go to the Staten for telling and see what they did there. Isaiah 62 5. Isaiah 62 5. Isaiah 62 5. Is want gelijk een jonkevro trot. Jonkevro? That's not a virgin, sorry. Don't try Don't try and twist that one too. For a young, for which is translated to. That's how God's name for Uh For as a young man marries a young woman. So shall your children marry thee, and as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so will your God rejoice over you. Okay. Okay, let's just get out of Isaiah for a bit, and we're just going to zip over to Jeremiah. You're not going to believe what I found in Jeremiah. Wow. Wow. Jeremiah. You're not going to believe what I found there. Jeremiah fourteen seventeen. Therefore thou shalt say this word unto them, Let mine eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease, for the virgin daughter of my people is broken with great breach, and a very grievous blow. Now let's go to Isaiah 14, 17. I'm going to start in the telling. Let's go. Daram zalt. He did word dot ge hen sechen. Me ohen zellen dan tranen Netherland, Ned Nederland, Ned Ned Nederdalen, Nacht en dag. A net op goden. Want de Janke vrouw, de dokter, means folks, is a broken met een grote break. Or broke in plag dit zeer smartelijk, which is translated to therefore you shall say this word to them my eyes shall come down with tears night and day and shall not cease for the young woman of the daughter of my people is broken with great a great break a plague that is very grievous plague a very grievous blow, but plague they change that and inversion to young woman. Whoa, they're really messing this up. They're really messing with God's word, guy. They're taking away and adding to God's word like crazy. Besides, a young woman, I know lots of young women that aren't virgins. Just don't you know, don't you know, young women that aren't virgins? Yeah, they go in the abortion clinics every day. Unmarried young women that aren't virgins. Yeah, so, so it's not a virgin. Don't you change be changing God's word? Don't you be changing God's word? Go to Jeremiah 18 13. Jeremiah 18.13. Let's go there. Jeremiah 18.13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Ask ye now among the heathen, Who hath heard such things? The virgin of Israel hath done a very horrible thing. The virgin of Israel? It's got to be pretty important if God's talking about His chosen 
his land and his chosen people, right? The Virgin of Israel? Let's see what Jeremiah 18, 13 did. Let's see what they did in the Stadtenberg Town. Daram so sagt der Herr, frag nu under der Gedenen, we, we have al solks gehoord, the jonke vrouw Israels doet een zeer af schwekelijk zak. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, oh, uh, I guess that's the Lord I turned, maybe the translator did that. Uh, therefore, thus says Lord, the Lord. Ask now among the nations, who has heard of this? The Lady of Israel is doing a very horrible things. The Lady of Israel, Yonkofro? That's not a virgin. It's just a lady. Just a lady doesn't mean it's a virgin. Many, many more virgins are missing in the book of Jeremiah in this wicked book. Yeah, this corrupt book. Let's go, let's go over to Job. Let's go over to Job. I, I can stay in Jeremiah for a long time. There's a lot of stuff in there. But, you know, this video will go on forever if I keep mentioning all the things in Jeremiah. But they talk about the virgins, change the virgins. Let's go to Job 1.8. Let's go to Job 1.8. Lament like a virgin, girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. Now let's go to the Staten for telling and see what they said. Joel 1.8 Karmt als een jonke vrouw jonke vrouw die met een zak om om hoort is wen weg wen weg den man van haar jood cry like a lady who is girded with a sack because of the man of her youth cry like a lady jonke vrouw or young woman Come on, give me a break. Give me a break. Wake, wake up, guys. Wake up. These translators are corrupt, and they've corrupted God's word. They're burning in hell, according to Revelation 22, 18 and 19. Don't follow them. Let the Holy Ghost lead you to all truth. Amos 5, 2. Let's go to Amos 5, 2 now. Let's go to Amos 5, 2. Amos 5, 2. The Virgin of Israel has fallen. There you go. Virgin of Israel. That's got to be important to God, right? All his words are important, but the Virgin of Israel, he's mentioned in Israel, is really important to him. She shall no more rise. She is forsaken upon her land. There is none to raise her up. Now let's go to the old corrupt Staten retelling here. See what it says. Amos 5 2. The Yonkofro Israel says, A fallen. Zezal nit weder upstand. They is verlaten op haar land. Er is nien, niemand, niemand dat haar oprekt. The young lady of Israel is fallen. She is not. She will not rise up again. She is abandoned on her land, and there is no one who raises her. Stay in Amos for a bit. Let's go to Amos eight thirteen. Let's get a witness scripture here in Amos, in the book of Amos. In that day shall there shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Amos eight thirteen and Staten for telling. Amos eight thirteen and Staten for telling. And to den dach sellen the shunte shunne jonke vrouw in the jongeling van dorst versmaken. In that day shall the fair ladies and the young men quench their thirst. Virgin gone again. Now, how was... Uh, let's get out of virgins for a bit because we can go on there. But How was uh, uh, the word study translated into Dutch? How do you think that was translated into Dutch? Now, you can say studi or besturden. You know, we are to study. We are to study to show ourselves approved unto God. A work, right? So, so we're study witches and sorcerers too, because your God told you to. We're to study about them. We're to study about them. We don't follow them. No, we study about them. So, we, so we know and we're warned about them. So let's go to Ecclesiastes twelve, twelve, and just just look at this. We're just going to look at this word study a bit. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. 
and much study is a weariness to the flesh. Well, that's pretty straightforward, eh? But let's see what the Staten Vertelling said. Let's see what the Staten Vertelling says in Ecclesiastes 12.12. 12. Ecclesiastes 12.12. 12. In what boven the self the is? Meson, meson. Wis hawarshud, hawarshud. Van vile boken te maken en is geen ende. En vile lesens is vermoeling, vermoeying des vlees. Translated to, and what is above them, my son, be warned. To make many books is no end, and many readings are a fatigue of the flesh. So let's just let's just let's just look at what this really says here. Many readings is that, is that what God said? Many readings? Did God say study? Or many? Re is there a word in Dutch for study? Yes, there is. I showed you that. Did the 16, uh, uh, 1600 translators have a word for study? Yes, they did. And it wasn't readings. It wasn't readings. It wasn't uh, uh, lessons. It wasn't readings. You can read something and not study it. I've read lots of books I haven't studied, just read them. And that's what people are doing with this. Reading it, passing on the words, they're not studying it. You know, I read this I read this book, this King James Bible. I read it several times through. Several times through, yeah. Actually, more than several times through. I've read it quite, quite, a, quite a few times through. And, but, but several, the first several times I read it through, as a young child and a young adult, I never studied it. I read it through. I never studied it. But just maybe, maybe the translators who are just getting you to read this book and not study it. There's more to just reading this book. They're studying it. We're instructed to study by God. Maybe their readings were with tarot cards. Yeah, maybe they got that related to tarot cards. Think about that. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 10 to 11. 1 Thessalonians 4, 10 to 11. First Thessalonians 4, 10 to 11. And indeed, ye do it toward all brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. Now, what would the Staten Vertelling do with that verse? Hmm. Staten Vertelling. First Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Thessalonians 4, 10 to 11. Want ge doet ook het zelf en al de broederen die in gegeel Macedonia zijn, maar we ver, ver, vermennen uw broeders, dat ge meer overvloeding word. For you also do the same to all the brethren who are in Macedonia. But we admonish you, brethren, that you become more abundant. Huh? Where does that go? Where does that go? Okay, verse 11. Oh yeah, verse 11. In the geu benar state still the same. In u eigen dingen te doen, in te werken, in u e met u eigen handen, eigen handen, gelijk we u beloven hebben, and that ye try to be quiet. Try to be quiet? Where does study go? Huh? I don't see study there. Try, and that ye try to be quiet, and do your own things, and to work with your hands, as we have commanded you. Hmm. Let's let's get another witness scripture here on study. Second Timothy two fifteen. Second Timothy two fifteen. Second Timothy two fifteen. Is study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to rightly divide the word of truth. You don't rightly divide this book. Or any, you don't really divide this book in any language, you're going to get really messed up in your doctrine. Really messed up. Messed up. And you're going to mess a lot of people up. 
and the chances are that you know unless they they read their bibles themselves and study their bibles themselves and let the holy ghost lead them to all truth they won't have the truth the truth to make you free right jesus says i am the truth if they don't have the truth they don't have the right jesus you better be very careful guys so let's go to staten retelling here uh uh second timothy 2 15 second timothy 2 15 Bernardstig u am u self god beproof voor de stellen in arbeide die niet beschaamd wordt die het woord de waarheid rechts niet be diligent try be diligent to try yourselves try god uh, translator messed that up a little bit but it's the words uh, a laborer who is not ashamed, who strength, who straightens the word of truth. Straightens the word, tr straightens the word of truth. Is that what God said? And He said, "Study, but not stay." Huh. Okay. Now we're going to just go back a minute to First Thessalonians four eleven because I wanted to show you that in some of the other Bibles too. You study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. And the Staten Vertelling is in dag u berster bernaarsteed stil te zeggen, te zien, in uw eigen dingen te doen, in te werken met uw eigen handen, gelijk we u beloven hebben. And that you try to be quiet and do your own things and to work with your own hands as we have commanded you. But in het boek, let's look in het boek now. Let's look in het boek, what it says. Because I've got it written down here. Let's look in that book. In that book, uh, uh, this, uh, this gets very interesting now. Let's, let's just look at this for a second. Zal u volledig in om in ruste leven te leden bemoei. En met u een zaken in verdien u eigen Boterham, zoals we dat in eerder hebben gezet, gezet. Which is fully, be fully committed to live a quiet life, interfere with your own business, and earn your own sandwich. As we have said before, wow. Now let's go to BB, a uh, basic Bible in, in Dutch. I just wanted to show you that one. Blijf ook rusten, je werk doen. Ik wil dat jullie je eigen brood verdienen. Dat hebben we jullie al eerder gezegd. Keeping your work quietly. You see, they put study to work. They put study to work. I, I want you to earn your own bread. We have said that before. So why did, why, why did these other Bibles mess us up so bad? And they're all the same. All these Dutch Bibles are the same. And one says, oh, don't, uh, Staten for telling pastors, say, oh, don't read that book. It's, it's, it's a wicked, it's just a book. It's just a book. This is just a book. The Staten for telling is just a book. Are you kidding me? You don't even study to be quiet? You've got to, got to shut your mouth and be quiet because you haven't studied. So Philippians 2, 6 to 7. And we're going to go on to something else here. Okay, Philippians 2, Philippians 2, 6 to 7. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, made in the likeness of men. Now let's see what the Staten Retelling did with this verse. <coughs> Philippians 2, 6 to 7. Die in de hersteltenis God zijn geen roof gehaakt, gehaakt heeft God een gelijk te zijn. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal to God. Hmm. Who being in the form of God did not consider it maar geeft zijzelf een Vernietigd. The uh, V E R N I E T I G D. The gestaltenis 
Ains Danes connects and her common heaven in the Mensen her lake to Warden. But he has destroyed himself, having received the form of a bondservant, and is made like unto men. Now, uh, reputation is reputati in Dutch. Not, not ver, vernitig, which is destroyed. He destroyed himself? God destroyed himself? Are you kidding me? We're speaking about Jesus Christ here. He destroyed himself? You've got to really be kidding me. These Dutch translators are just wicked. <coughs> Talking about Jesus Christ, and the Dutch are saying he destroyed himself? So 1 Timothy 3.16. Let's go to the controversy. 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the word in the world, believed on in the world received up in glory and what is this that we're telling you to that verse let's just take a little book here let's just take a little look here in Bhutan ala twelve the verbond gate the God select is groot God is open barred in it place in her in her geest is a scene van de angelen, angelen, in a predict voor de hederen, hedenen, is a loved in the world, 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 is open, op genomen in heerlijkheid, and beyond doubt the mystery of godliness is great. God is revealed. Careful with that word. Revealed in the flesh. That's the way. Well, it's actually the way it does translate it. Justified in the spirit. Seen from the angels. Preached among the Gentiles. Is believed in the world. Recorded or, or included. Uh, I'm not sure how they're, how, what kind of word they used there, but it wasn't God's word. Ordered and included in glory, revealed in the flesh. Revealed in the flesh? That's the same as the, all the new Catholic Bibles. Of which some also say appeared. There's no manifest. He wasn't manifest in the flesh according to the Dutch. He appeared or, 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 or was revealed in the flesh? Are you kidding me? Anybody could have been there. See, how could he have been born if he just revealed in the flesh? So let's study, not just study, but the word witch and sorcerer like we spoke of let's study that and to do that we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go back to Exodus 711 Exodus 711 Exodus 711 then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers now the magicians of Egypt they also did in like manner with their enchantments and what do you think the Staten for telling would have done to that uh, we're looking for the word sorcerers. Man shall be ruled by law, not by the will of other men. Who is this God that I should let your people go? Aaron, cast down my staff before Pharaoh, that he may see the power of God. In this you shall know that the Lord is God. Now I'm gonna might need some help here because uh, I'm having a lot of trouble with this because uh, there's so many meanings to a word, but I've checked all these meanings out, and we're gonna go to Exodus 7:11. Basis Babel for uh, no, let's go to Staten for telling. Pharaoh knew read oak the ways then and the hul hulikhelars and the egyptians tovenars 
they then also met Khun Bezwer Bezweringen. Pharaoh called also the wise men and the hypocrites hmm. and the Egyptian wizards also did so with their enchantment incantations. Hmm. And a basis bay let's just go to basis babel because it's interesting too. Tun rup the Pharaoh the Egyptians geleden the tovenars. Zij deden voor hoe to verkunsten hezelfde. Then the Pharaoh called the Egyptian scholars and sorcerers. Hmm, interesting. They did the same through their magic arts. And then het book. Het book is toen ontbound the Pharaohs they geleerden the tovenaars and they deden hetzelfde wonder door hun magic. Then the Pharaoh called his scholars and sorcerers and they did the same miracle through their magic. Why did the, the Stadenberg telling call it Halukin Lars? That, 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 you know what, I need a little bit of help with that one, but it just doesn't look right. I'm sorry, guys, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. So, <clears throat> now let's, Exodus 22, 18. Let's look at Exodus 22, 18, because we're talking about witches and sorcerers. Exodus 22, 18. Exodus 22, 18. And first we're going to get a King James Bible here. Exodus 22, 18. Exodus 22, 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Now, what is a witch? What is a witch? Now, a witch would be, uh, let's look at definition number one, which would be a woman thought to have magic powers, especially evil ones. Now, we're going to see some real interesting things here. Popularly depicted as wearing black a black cloak. Oh, funny, a lot of the modern uh, apostles do that. And pointed hat, and I like to wear hats in church too, and flying on a broomstick. I'm sure they probably do that if they could too. Uh, and uh, number two, a more informal uh, meaning would be an ugly or unpleasant woman. You know. Now a wizard, on the contrary, is a man who has magical powers. Now we're going to look back there. If a wizard is a man that has magical powers, and a witch is a woman. That tells us something, right? So let's go to the stat for telling and see what that says. Verse 18. Exodus 22, 18. The tovers zalt geen nit laten leven. Which is, you will not let a wizard live. Okay? But the English King James says a witch, which is a fenomen. A fenomen. I mean, a woman. A female. So why would you call it a wizard? It, God says... You shall not suffer a witch to live. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Why would the Staten Vertelling call it a wizard? That's male. Even if it means sorcerer somehow, it's still male. Because a sorceress is female. You see? You see? You see how they added to and took away from God's word? Exodus twenty-two eighteen and had book. In Toveners Mut Warden Hadod. And in, in, now, in, this is very interesting. Head book is a sorceress must be killed. At least it's female, right? So the head book actually gives God more glory than this wicked Staten Vertelling. And all the Staten Vertelling pastors are saying, oh, it's just a book. Don't read it. It's just a book. Why does it give more God more glory than your Staten Vertelling? Right? Sorceress must be killed, right? Hmm. Sorceress, female. A witch is female. Deuteronomy 18.10. Deuteronomy 18.10. Let's get another witness scripture here. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Or a witch. Is that in retelling? <coughs> Let's see what they did there. Under Uzal Nit have Werden. The same son of a same doctor, door het 
wir dort doorgaan die met waarzegeringen zegeren om gaat in gulgulik gooch goochelar of die wolken his kreef act geven of tonevar there shall not be found among a uh, tonevar by you that that means either wizard or sorcerer male okay now there shall not be found among you who cause his son or his daughter to pass through the fire who deals with fortune telling a hypocrite or who speaks like a bird or a sorcerer a bird speaks like a bird where did this come from these guys are insane now let's find out what Chalukers means, actually means. If you put uh, G-U-I-C-H-E-L-A-A-R-S. Guchlars. It means hypocrites, gossipers, sorcerer, which is male, not female. But God said witch. God said witch. They're not talking about witches here. Deuteronomy 18.10. Uh, well, I can go to head book. Uh, I can go to, no, I'm not going to go to head book. I'm just going go to I'm gonna go to the next one here. Is uh, the head book says a fortune teller actually, instead of a sorcerer. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to Daniel two two in the King James here. Daniel two two. We're going to go somewhere else. Daniel two two. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans, Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. Now let's go to uh, let's go to Staten Vertelling. Is uh, let's go to Staten Vertelling. Toen zeit de koning dat men roepen zo de tonevars, tovenaars, in de sterrenkijkers, in de guchelaars, in de chalid. Chaldean, om de koning zij dromen te kennen te geven, zij nu kwamen en stonden voor een act en zeggen de konings. And the king said that the magicians and the stargazers and the hypocrites, which are god or gossipers, it can be translated to, and the Chaldean Chaldeans should be called to show the king his dream. And they came and stood before the king. Now, you know what? We're going to go to head book on that one. We're going to go to head book on that one because because i got to show you guys something here. All these pastors say head book is just a book. Is uh, He on pond meten al halerden bezwerders tovenaars in astrologen. Ze moest moesten hem zou dromen verklaren. He immediately summoned all scholars, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers that had to explain his dream. Head book, right? Head book, right? So why are Stadenberg telling pastors telling you head book is just a book when it translates properly where the Stadenberg telling fails? Why would they do that? Uh, so let's turning to uh, John. We're going to turn to the book of John now, and we're going to talk a little bit about the beast here because the beast is behind. Beast is definitely behind this book. This is an Antichrist book. It's an Antichrist book. It's a corrupt Catholic text. Turn to the book of John, and we're going to go look at the beast there. Okay, Revelation 13. We're going to Revelation 13 to look at John. John who wrote the book of Revelation. And we're going to see uh, if they turn John into the beast or not. This, this book is that we're telling. Revelation 13, 13. 13, 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. That's John. I stood upon. That's John. Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now, this book, th th this verse is corrupted by all modern Bibles. All modern, well, corrupted by modern Bible verses. Not necessarily all. There's a couple that, uh, I think, a Jewish one or something that doesn't. Or a couple of them. And the, and the, and then what they do is they put and the dragon stood on the sand of the seashore. All the all the, the New English versions there, the New English versions they put and the dragon stood on the sand of the seashore, or they take out the part of John standing in the sand. They take that right out. 
all the New English versions. Now, the Dutch Bibles also cloud John's testimony. Why would they do that? Why would you want to cloud John's testimony? Unless the beast is your God, your father? Hmm? The Dutch Bibles also cloud John's testimony. They also take away John standing on the sand of the sea. The Staten Vertelling not only removes John from the sand, but removes crowns and adds royal hats. Adds royal hats. Change crowns and royal hats. Koning like Odin instead of Kroon. They had a word for crown. They had a word for crowns. <coughs> Kroon or crowns. Friends, this Bible is guilty of Revelation 18. Revelation 22, 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, that if any man shall add to these things, Staten Vertelling has been added to, God shall add unto him. You got a Staten Vertelling? God could very well add unto you the plagues that are written in this book. Is there plagues written in the Staten Vertelling? Yes, there is. You want the plagues of this book? Then you better be led to all truth, the King James Bible in the English language. Because you Dutch people, you all speak English. You all speak English. You should have no excuse. No excuse. You haven't studied to show thyself approved. Verse 19. If any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from all the things which are written in this book, you're going to be taken out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things that are written in this book. At least you repent. But you Dutch pastors that are deceiving all the people, you're in such serious trouble. You are in so much trouble. Oh man, you better wake up before you die. Daniel 7, 9 to 10. We're going to look at Daniel 7, 9 to 10. We're going to look at that. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Let's see what the Staten Vertelling did with that one. Daniel 7, 9 to 10. Daniel 7, 9 to 10. Dit sag, sag ik, tot dat er tronen gesed worden, en de ode van dagen sit, ze sit, weens kleed wit als de snow, en de hair zijns hoofd, hoofd, als zilver wool. Zo, so, zo, so, zilver wool? Hm. Uh, zijn troon was verwonken, de zelfs radaren in branden vuur. En ik zag until there were thrones, en put the ancient, and put the ancient of days, whose garment was white as snow, and the hairs of his head as pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, a raging, raging fire of his own. And the Ancient of Days did sit, they said, Put? Put? The Ancient of Days? No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Anyhow, uh, Jesus was put instead of sits? Jesus was put instead of sits? Where are Christ's wheels in Dutch? Where are Christ? I don't see his Christ. But why was he put instead of sits? That's exactly what the New English Bibles did. All the Catholic texts. The Catholics slipped that in. You got a Catholic Bible that's that in foretelling. They didn't understand what it meant, so they took it away from the Word of God. Let's go to Ezekiel 116. Look at a little bit more about wheels. Ezekiel 116. 116. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel. A barrel. And they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And the Staten Vertelling, this is, I, I need a little bit of help with this one. This looks really weird, really weird. The Gendankte de Radaren in der Self Selveren Maskel was als de Werf van de Turquoise. And wir hadden in her lake gelijken gelijkenis gelijkenis daartoe was hun dante in hun maskel 
alsof it were in rad. Is rad a wheel? I'm not sure the rad is a wheel. Rad in het midden and van het rad. The appearance of the radar regs. Uh, that's what the, the Dutch translator is translating this for me into radar, a regs. Uh, for the the radarin. And the like was like turquoise paint. These four had a similarity. For this purpose, their shape and their work was like a row in the middle of a row. And their work, I, I, I don't know. But anyhow, let's look a little bit more about wheels. I don't know what the radar in, if it's a wheel or not. It, it, it doesn't translate to a wheel in the translator. I, I, I don't know why. And, and we need to know. We need to know if they corrupted God's word even more. Ezekiel 119 and when the living creatures went the wheels went behind them and when the living creatures were lifted from the earth the wheels were lifted up Stop and Vertelling says Als nu de dieren gingen Als nu de dieren gingen gingen de redaren redaren by hen en als de dieren van Arde open geven werden, werden de redenen open geven. 19 is when the animals went, the animals went, yeah, the raids went with them. And when the animals of the earth were lifted, the radar raids were lifted. Hmm. It seems weird. I need a little bit of help with that one. If there's a Dutch pastor out there who wants to be led to all truth, God, Holy Ghost leading you all through, please contact me and we'll work on this together. Judges 5.28. Now we're going to go to Judges 5.28. We're going to look at something a little bit different here about the wheels. The mother of Sisera looked out the window and cried through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariot? Uh, that is in Staten Vertelling. De moeder, de moeder van Cecilia keek uit door het venster en schreeuwd door de trillen. Waarom vertoeft zijn wegen te komen? Waarom blijven de ganger zijn er? Wegen een actor, which is the mother of Cecilia, Cecilia looked out through the window, shouting through the bars. Why does his chariot keep coming? Why do the corridors of chariots left behind? Why do the corridors of chariots? Oh, man. But anyhow, she looked through the lattice, and here she looked out, she looked out, shouting through the bars. Cried through the bars. I could need some help with that one, but but anyhow, the corridors of the chariots. But anyhow, if I can get a Dutch pastor out there, Holy Ghost leading you in all truth. I'd love to work with you. I'd love for you to help me out here with some of this translation. Really appreciate that. So uh, you don't have to be a pastor, just a Dutch person that's really interested in the truth, that's really good in Dutch and English. That'd be really helpful. But anyhow, stay tuned for part nine. Where is God's word for the Dutch-speaking people and new version lovers? The German connection. Was Luther's 1522 Bible used? And was Martin Luther saved? And which Bible did he translate the New Testament from? He did that in 11 weeks. Uh, Frederick of Saxony, a friend of him, uh, the, uh, a friend of his, he was about to be uh, probably uh, burned at the stake by the Catholic Church, but Frederick of Saxony kidnapped him. He pulled off a hoax kidnapping and... He uh, took him to his castle, and in 11 weeks in the castle, probably at candlelight all night, Martin Luther worked for 11 weeks and translated uh, the New Testament uh, into the German language. Thank you very much, and we'll see you guys in part 9. And have a beautiful day. May the Lord, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of God, bless you in all truth. Mary, can you hear me? Check her pulse.
Nothing. Charging at 200. Clear. Go, go. Go again. Charging at 300. Clear. We got her. She's back.
and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.